Hey guys, welcome to the second episode. Uh, in the previous episode, we talked about how I was gathering all the information together to make the uh, setup process of Magento a lot simpler. So that's something we'll be going over today. Uh, specifically, I'll be going over some of the store configuration. I will be skipping lots of bits because I plan to revisit it later down the line. But these initial settings, I like to get sorted out quite quickly because it helps uh, form a foundation for everything else that I'll be setting up. Now, just let you know, I have literally just finished installing Magento 2.3.3 uh, using the uh, post that you'll find uh, on the site forum. You'll also find a link to that video in the description below. And that'll take you through the whole process of setting up a web server and Magento 2.3.3 from scratch. Okay, so let me log in here using the details that I've just uh, given it. Hopefully it won't be too slow uh, when I load it up for the first time. We getting there? Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, skip that. Let me just make sure that all my caches are turned on. They should be. Yeah, they are. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, cool. Right, so first things first, I'm going to go into stores configuration. Oh, by the way, when I um, installed this, I went through the web setup wizard. There was a stage where it asked if I wanted to set the domain name for the store. By default, it will grab the IP address of your server and use that instead. As you can see, if you look in the, yeah, you can see, if you look in the upper left of the screen, you can see that uh, it's using our IP address as the domain name. I've left that there on purpose because uh, when I set up a new store, even if I do have a domain name ready for it, I will tend to do that somewhere later down the line because I like to set up the domain name and the SSL certificate, uh, set those up together. And it's something that's a lot easier to do further down the line, I would say, than uh, setting up initially on the get-go. Um, but that's just personal preference. So we will cover that later down the line. I just wanted to let you know that if you are following along, you can just leave that as the default pre-filled bit. Okay, country options. I'm not US, I'm UK. I tend to ignore some of these other bits and pieces. Um, what else do I want to change? Mm, I tend to work in kilograms, so I'll change that. Store information, cool. Um, we've got that written down here. So that, and remember all this is dummy information. Um, uh, country, United Kingdom. Um, first line of address, I guess it's that, and then that, and then that. See, this is the kind of thing that if you were setting a store for somebody and you didn't have these details, it would be a very easy thing to um, skip and forget to go back to. But a lot of the information that we're filling in here acts as placeholders for shortcuts. So an example would be that in the emails, it uses placeholders to input the address and the phone number. And it's actually, this is where um, it gets that information from, or at least most of the time it does anyway. And uh, that number, I think that'll do. Okay, so the last option, single store mode. This is something that I've been pondering for a while. The the single store mode is something new to Magento 2. Uh, I don't ever recall seeing it in Magento 1. I'm pretty sure it wasn't there. Um, by default, Magento supports multi-stores, so whether that be multiple domain, um, domain names or running under one installation or multiple languages, for example. Um, I generally don't tend to do stores like that, so 
I like to have this setting set to yes now for Magento 2 installations. Uh, what it does, it simplifies some of the configuration options of the back end so that you're not um, presented with settings that might complicate your setup. So yeah, but I'm not sure whether I want to try and tackle doing this store in another language, even though technically I've set it up for UK only, but it, maybe we'll play around with it, I don't know. So anyway, I'm gonna leave it as no. So that's that one done. Okay, I think web we're gonna come back to when I sort the domain name out and stuff. Yeah, I'll come back to that at a later date. Currency, British pounds, yeah, that took the, um, my configuration options during the web setup wizard uh, during the installation of Magento to pre-fill that, so that's fine. Uh, store email addresses, so here's an interesting one. I've seen a lot of stores, not just Magento stores, where the default sender name is, is left in place. So for example, owner or sales or customer support. Now you may have emails come through to you in the past uh, on, I don't know, Gmail, Hotmail, whatever, and it says sender sales or sender customer support, and you're like, Okay, but who is it from? So one thing that you should do, and I recommend you do, is add your store name to the sender. So where's my store name? Quality bedding. So what I'm gonna do for these, I'm gonna put uh, quality bedding for general, quality bedding sales, um, quality bedding support, and then for the last two, uh, just in case we do use these in the future, I'm just gonna put quality bedding. Now I might even be tempted to get rid of sales and support and just have quality bedding, because unless you're a gigantic um, company with multiple departments um, and hundreds of staff, I think it doesn't make sense to have um, different sender names. I think it, it's, it's better for the customer and probably clearer uh, and less confusing just to have quality bedding and that's it so um, so yeah based on that I'm gonna take that out as well I'll take it back so I'm just gonna have quality bedding and then for the sender emails again I, to keep it really nice and clear for the customer I'm gonna use the same email address which is sales at quality bedding dot uk and I'm happy with those and I'm gonna hit save Okay, uh, contacts, so same again. The second part, I'm gonna put the email address in for sales at. Um, email sender, so I'll put general contact and hit save for that. Okay, I think reports I'm gonna leave, yes I am. Content management, so the one thing with um, the Magento WYSIWYG editor that you use for writing description for products or content pages is really, um, the word I wanna use is dated. It's nothing like if you were to use a new WordPress system or anything like that. It's a little bit in the past, even though it did recently upgrade from tiny MCE3 to tiny MCE4, um, it still feels a bit not quite right. And what you'll notice is as well that when you come to install um, themes for your store in the future. It will use these little um, short codes in the HTML. And what the uh, tech, WYSIWYG text editor and Magento likes to do is see that and then misinterpret it as something else. And then when you go to save it, um, so for example, it might be um, a CMS page, uh, a sales page telling the customer about something. When you hit save, um, it will break all of the formatting. So what I like to do here is choose disabled by default. Um, at, at least I get the option to turn it on if I need to turn it on. But as an old school kind of web guy, I do a lot of um, HTML editing raw by typing it rather than use a, wiggy, a WYSIWYG editor. So this might not be the right setup for you, but just bear in mind that in the future, um, if you do install a theme and it installs short codes for stuff, uh, just um, just be aware of that when you come to save pages in case it breaks the code that's already in there. Okay, I'm gonna save that. Um, new Reddit reporting is a 
paid service, I believe, through one of um, Magento's partners. It's off by default, and I intend to keep it that way. Advanced reporting uses um, one of Magento's uh, reporting suite tools or something. From what I've read, I believe it's free. Um, but you can't actually set it up and still, until your site goes live because it starts tracking data. Um, sorry, it needs to start tracking sales data before it generates an account for you or something like that. So we can't do anything with that today anyway. Okay, so let's jump to catalog. Uh, I'm just gonna expand all of these, just make it a little bit easier to skim through. And it, we will be skimming through this. Uh, I won't be going into too much detail. Not at this stage anyway. So I toyed with the idea of having um, the list mode set to grid only rather than being able to change from grid to list. If anything, only to clean up the user interface when customers are staring at the page. Um, anecdotally, I have no facts to back this up. I think that when customers are searching for browsing products on your website, um, it's easier and more natural for them to scan through a grid of images rather than image text, image text, image text. It just makes it more efficient to go through. Um, okay, I'll leave it. I'll leave it as it is, which is interchangeable between grid and list, but set to grid as default. I may come back later and change this to grid only. But okay, so I'm pretty happy with some of these. Um, I'm probably digressing a bit now and I wanted to keep the video short, but I recently learned thanks to uh, a member of the digital startup community that the use flat catalog tool is actually uh, not recommended by Magento anymore. I'm not going to go into detail as to why that is. I actually wrote an article about it recently. Let me have a look. Um, stop using flat catalog in version 2.3. I'll put a link to that in the video description below if you're interested in reading about it. But suffice to say, I normally turn these both on. Oh, sorry, I normally set them both to yes, but today we will not be doing that. Okay, what else do I want to change? Um, I'm pretty happy with most of the defaults. Yep, looking good. I can't remember if I changed anything. I'll hit save just in case. Okay, so that's done. Uh, inventory. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, okay, let's expand these options. Okay, uh, one of these I'd like to change. Display product out of stock products, yes. I like to change that from no to yes, uh, mostly because I've been in industries where if a, a product gets sold, they still want that product to be advertised because stock will be coming in in the near future and they want to make sure that customers notice that it's still visible or maybe they want to take some sort of back orders on it. So display out of products, I normally set to yes. Um, okay, let's leave that. I'm good there. Okay, cool. Like I said, I did say at the beginning of this video, I'll be flying through a lot of these settings. Um, and when I come back later to fine tune these settings, I'll probably go into more detail as to why I'm doing that. But XML, I can leave, I think I can leave RSS as well, yes. Email to a friend. Do people even still use email to a friend? I guess they do, don't they? They normally WhatsApp stuff to each other. Okay, I'm gonna enable this. I guess it can be turned off at a later date, can't it? Okie dokie. So security, both 2FA and recapture. These are settings that I'm going to come back and revisit once I have uh, set up the domain name and the SSL certificate because I believe the Google API that you need to use to set these up requires it to use a domain name that has a um, SSL certificate set up in place for it. So we'll come back and revisit that. But it is an important one to come back and revisit. Newsletter, if this is on, I'm going to disable it because it sucks. Okay, if I want to have a newsletter in the future, I'd implement something like .mailer or Mandrill, sorry, um, MailChimp uh, to do that. So I'm gonna leave all that. 
uh, customer configuration. I've got a feeling we'll come back and revisit this when I actually come to set up all the customers. But let me just make sure I am happy with this. Um, okay. Uh, enable automatic group. Now leave that, leave that. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm going to change default email domain from example.com to the domain of the store. Um, that's the only setting that I think I want to change there. Ah, yes, there was something else to do with the password strength. Okay, so I know some customers, okay, I guess this is anecdotally as well. In the past, um, I've had feedback from customers that they've struggled to set up their user accounts because they don't quite understand uh, how to use character classes for passwords. So for example, like lowercase, uppercase, digits, special characters. Um, so to help them meet in the middle a little bit, um, I reduced the amount of character classes from three down to two. Yes, it makes it a little bit less secure for the customer, but at least it still has some level of security in there and it doesn't make the customer bend over backwards. Now, if we were setting up some sort of banking website, I probably will be wanting to increase this. But at the end of the day, uh, it's customers buying bedding off me. So I guess it doesn't have to be the most secure thing in the world. I don't know. Um, give me your opinion in the comments below. Uh, okay, right. So I think I'm leaving... <laughs> um, I'm going to make the prefix optional. I think I told this story in the first series, but uh, a customer once got really upset that um, the uh, prefix, which shows Mr, Miss, Mrs and whatnot, got very upset because we hadn't set one up for doctor. And uh, ever since that happened, I've always come back and made sure that the prefixes exist and they include doctor. So let's just go Mr. Miss, Mrs. Doctor. That'll that'll do for now, won't it? Um, I don't need anything to be mandatory, so that's fine. Uh, most of this is going to be fine as well. Okay, I'm going to hit save. Okay, wish list. I recently turned this on, off on a store that I was using. Um, I used Google Analytics to monitor how often the wish list would get used by monitoring the amount of times people clicked on it. And several thousand customers a day, sometimes you'd go a whole day without anyone clicking on it. So what I ended up doing in the end was just purely disabling it because it was just taking up uh, real estate on the product pages and it just seemed like a waste of area to have there if there was no demand to have it in place. So now that I've um, I've picked up on that, I think I'm gonna disable this by default and hit save. Okay, I think we can ignore promotions, persistent shopping carts, I like to have in place, cookies for 12 months. So I should, all I need to do is change that from no to yes and hit save. Uh, sales. Okay, let's uh, expand this. How are we doing for time? We're coming up to the 20 minute mark. Okay, uh, right, let's have a look. Let's leave that. Yeah, something I've not done yet is create any logos or marketing material for this quality bedding store. So I guess I'm gonna have to start working on those images for next time. So I'll have to come back and revisit this. This section uh, is for adding a logo onto the invoice PDFs that get printed off and attached to your customer's order. So I like to make sure I have a logo on there. Um, so I'll have to revisit this bit. Okay, and where are we now? Okay, sales emails. Um, according to the Magento documentation, uh, they recommend that you should have asynchronous sending as enabled by default, not disabled by default, which is a little bit confusing. 
So I'm going to change that from enabled. Oops, I'm going to change that from and disabled to enabled now, um, so that I don't forget to change this again in the future. And I'll, I'm going to leave everything else as yes and hit save. Uh, PDF printouts. That's fine. Ah, oh, tax. Oh, tax is a nightmare. Um, setting tax rates up's a nightmare. These settings aren't. Um, let me expand these. Okay, Vertex is also a Magento partnered service that requires some sort of monthly fee or something or pay as you go fee. I'm not quite sure, so I won't be utilizing Vertex. In fact. I'll be completely disabling it within Magento at some point during the series, um, so you don't need to worry about Vertex. Um, the calculation settings might need fine tuning. I know as Magento is a US um, business, um, these settings are catered around uh, US customers, and I know in the UK we do things slightly different in terms of the, the, the um, the organization of how the tax is displayed and probably the rest of Europe as well so I'll leave it as it is but we'll probably have to come back and revisit this so I'm gonna leave that as it is check out check out check out check out um, yeah we're good here um, I won't be doing shipping settings or payment settings today so we'll come back and revisit that 3d D secure. This looks like another new partner thing. I'll have to research this and come back to you. I haven't I haven't seen this 3D secure option before. Cardinal Commerce. Uh, it definitely looks like a partner thing, so I'll see if I can find out for next week. Okay, Yopo. Again, it's another third party service. I'm not going to be going into that today. Engagement Cloud, which I think is dot mailer, isn't it? Pretty sure. Uh, dot digital, that'll be dot mailer, yeah. So both the engagement cloud and Yopo uh, also uh, Magento partner solution people uh, that require uh, paying a fee for. So there's no point setting this up if it's not going to get used. And then services, I'm almost certain we don't have to change anything in services straight away. Nope. No. And nope. And then finally, okay, sorry, we're a bit over the 20 minute mark today. Um, but finally, let's have a quick look at some of these settings, see if I'm happy with these. Yes, that's fine. Okay, startup page. Um, in For the companies that I've done work for in the past, the default startup page um, has always been switched over to sales orders. That's because when the warehouse login, they automatically want to go to the order screen so they know what to pick. Uh, customer service team, uh, again, same applies for them to go into the orders and sales team, same again. Um, so it doesn't really make much sense to have the dashboard page uh, set up as the default page. Um, actually, I may as well show you that now. So this is typically the dashboard page, which would show you some of the headline numbers, such as sales and whatnot it doesn't really make much sense for this to be the default page you see when you log in because you're just going to end up going to sales orders anyway so to make this page now the default page so you can see straight away your orders that you've received just makes a lot more sense to me so I'm just going to change that to uh, sales operations orders Okay, dokey. Uh, okay, um, admin account sharing. No, a lot of these can be left as defaults. Um, apart from case sensitivity, it's annoying for the admins to be able to have to use uh, case sensitive passwords. But tough. Uh, it's, it comes down to security at the end of the day. And then. Um, Okay, right, save that. And then we've got system. When we come to optimizing this website in a few weeks or a couple of months, um, we'll spend a lot more time in this advanced section as we're trying to tweak things. But I think for this initial setup, I'm gonna end up leaving it alone. Uh, okay, backup settings. I think as of Magento 2.3 or 2.26 or 2.27, I think, um, they added this setting in the, in the back end 
to uh, enable or disable store backups. Um, so it, apparently it's been taken offline by default for security purposes. I'm not a hundred percent I can see where they're coming from, but it seems a bit overkill. Um, so I'm just going to switch this back to yes. I'm not going to enable a scheduled backup, not yet anyway, because I'm currently in the development stage. So I'm just going to leave that set to no. Uh, forward cache, yep, yeah, that's fine. And then finally, we've got the uh, developer section, which I think I'm going to be leaving everything in its place. So look, yep, yeah, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Okay, cool. So the initial setup and installation is now complete. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what we're going to be doing next week. I think I might concentrate on setting up the customer groups. Um, I might change my mind between now and then, but we'll see. Uh, so look, yeah, but aside from that, we've covered all the basics we need to cover so far. Um, and then like I said, in the next episode, we'll cover something else. That should be a week from now. If you're watching this in the future, then this video is going to autoplay into that video anyway. So just sit tight and we will get straight there.